Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, I'm Arthelene Rippey, and so happy to be here with you. Uh, I think you'll really like the program today, so just stay with us all the way. If you haven't seen us before, name is Home Keepers, and we believe in keeping that home, keeping it close, keeping it tight, keeping the people in it healthy and not really wealthy, but healthy, and also uh, turning their hearts to the Lord because that's when you're going to have good success. So we try to help you do that in many ways. Uh, I think you're going to like our guests today, Daniel and Jocelyn Height. They are pastors of a wonderful church in Fort Myers, Florida, and he has written a book on Keep It Simple. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but I love the how-to books and how to be better organized and uh, just anything that kind of improve your life. And so this is what he has written about, Keep It Simple. And these are ideas that you can use, whether you're a homekeeper or whether you're in an office. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful things that can help your life move a lot more smoothly. So that's what we're going to talk about. And do you ever remember your mother's apple pie? My mother baked wonderful pies. Well, this isn't really an apple pie, but it might taste, you know, like a good apple pie. And... Uh, remind you of those days and so uh, it's very very easy it's called an easy apple crisp it couldn't be easier and F Stephanie and I are going to show you how to do that and I'll join her in a minute after I tell you about Bible basics I would think everybody out there would want this book and I'm not kidding because you know the Bible was written what more than 2,000 years ago and uh, there are ways and things you can know that will help you navigate better and understand better and the author of this little book has really kind of capsulized those ideas to help you understand the Word of God better and uh, really how to get through it, what it's all about. Bible Basics by Terry Claspy. And this is yours for any amount that you want to send to us. Any gift, we appreciate it so much and we will send it right out to you. Information's on your screen for either the address or the 800 number. Just uh, write those down and you can uh, have your book and we'll get to you as quickly as possible. We do have them in stock right now. And I highly recommend this and I, I like anything that gives you a shortcut, you know, whether it's understanding the Bible or a recipe. There's a lot of ways you can have a shortcut and help your life go along more smoothly. And I'm here with someone that really knows how to smooth out life. Oh, you have you have educated <laughs> us on so many things. I try. I, I bought more Christmas presents today. You did? We're April. What are we? April. We are April. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm getting there. I'm so excited. Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up. I, I think that through the year we need to remind the girls. Um, I hadn't thought of it that way, but by the time you reach Christmas, I'm done. You're done, and you're paid yes. for. Yes, and you're I'm paid. decorating my bags with chalk couture. So it's going to have another special touch. Okay, oh, so we'll that's have to all. show you how to do that. Yeah. Okay, okay, so talk about super simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to spray the pan for mm -hmm. me. We have two cans of apple pie filling. Okay, you don't even have to peel the apples. Mm -hmm. You don't have to slice the apples. I'll cook them. And this, you can remember this recipe, but you, the information will be on the screen. But it's a cup of flour. It says a cup of sugar. I went a little bit less. Yeah, you okay. could. Okay, with these apples, you could. You could go way half or less. Yeah, I have a stick of cold butter that I'm going to um, cut right into this, okay? And then I just have some cinnamon and some nuts. You're gonna, If you want to put the two cans okay. of apple um, pie filling into the, that pan, um, it's an 8 by 8 pan that she sprayed. The, the recipe actually called for pecans, but I think walnuts go with... She thinks walnut goes, goes better, with so apple. we're going with walnuts. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. So you just cut this in really good. If you don't have a, 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 a butter cutter, a butter cutter in her, you can use forks. You can use knives. You can use your fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's putting the two cans in the bottom of the pan, and then she's going to sprinkle two teaspoons of cinnamon right over the top. Well, you're a whole lot younger than I am, a whole lot. But even in, <laughs> even in your experience... There's a lot of shortcuts now. Oh, yeah. Like this, you know, you think apple pie, you think apple crisp, and you're like, forget it. That is way too much My work. My mother, this you know, so simple. it was everything from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm past that. I'm past those days. You're past the scratch yes. part, huh? I was there one t at one time, and now I'm like, no, thank you. 
why. So, okay, so you have two cans of apple pie filling. You're going to sprinkle cinnamon, cinnamon, two teaspoons of cinnamon right okay. over the top. I cut one stick of butter into a cup of flour and almost a cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. And then I have some chopped nuts. I'm going to mix right in there. Okay, are you ready how, how hard this is? Okay, mm -hmm. you did the cinnamon. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm spreading gonna... it around a little bit because some of them came out in hunks. Okay. Hunks. Hate it when that happens. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to move this so we're not mm. on it. Okay. And I'm licking my fingers. Yep. And then all we're going to do is Didn't put we get the... a letter from somebody who said don't lick your fingers? I didn't. How do you? It's your show. You can do it. How you do want. you cook without licking your fingers? Right. Okay. And then you put this right over the top. You bake it for about 25, 30 minutes at, at a real hot oven. At so what? 400? 400, I think. Yeah. 400. And look at the deliciousness. Mm. Look at this that comes out. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It looks so good. Now. Now. They can't say we don't go the second mile in this show. Because? Because we bought some ice cream to make it apple pie a la mode. Yes, so apple crisp a la mode. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I That's gotta, gorgeous. Yeah, I got to taste the, uh, there I am using my fingers all. again. Yep. And licking them. Yep. And okay. this one's all on you because I know me. Mm -hmm. And if I take one bite of this, I will take a big bowl of it up to my office and I will yeah, inhale it. Yeah, and if we tried to take the big bowl away, she would be violent. I'm trying to be so good. It's so good, right? The smell is just like apple pie. It's I just like got to so say, good. you want the kind one. of taste. The taste is a lot like mama's apple yeah. pie. Yeah. You can't go wrong with this one. It is You will impress wonderful. your guests. It's called apple crisp, but if you like the if you like apple pie, you know the idea of apples with the crust, you're going to like this. Information is coming up on your screen. Now I've got food in my mouth, so don't talk with food <laughs> in your mouth. Uh, so stay with us. You're going to meet, uh, <coughs> pardon me, Dan and Jocelyn Height. You're going to love them. Stay around. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. What a pleasure to welcome Pastor Dan Haight and his wife, Jocelyn. Uh, family celebration. Family, family church, church, right. That's right, in Fort Myers, Florida. So anybody in that area, you might want to check it out. I love the name of it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I heard that just recently you, you got a, a new grandson. We do. What, in the last few days or so? No, five weeks ago five weeks. yesterday. Okay, well, congratulations. Thank you so but, much. But uh, you got a long way to go to catch up with me. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes, I got eight great-grandchildren. Oh, wow. okay. And another one on the way. But uh, the reason I say that is because his book, Keep It Simple, is... A wonderful book about being organized, getting things done, having a goal, setting it. And I'm telling you, I've not outgrown that. I still love to read motivational books and ideas to be better organized. So uh, I think this book is for anybody, yeah. maybe especially younger people. Yeah. Okay, what was it that uh, just kind of stimulated you to write it? I'll tell you how, what happened was many years ago, um, I was on, when Jocelyn and I first met, we'd been married 35 years, so, <laughs> uh, but um, I was on an advanced team from a large church up in New Jersey, and we would go in the Caribbean and have um, large crusades there. And, the, and so on this advanced team, I'd have to go down and you know, do all the front work, get the permits, all the stuff you have to do for that sort of thing. Do the TV, do the radio, go speak in all the churches. And and my contact person, I'd had no idea who it was until I got there. He ended up being a multimillionaire and the former governor, which would be like our president of the country. Wow. And so it was an incredible opportunity. And he's just the neatest guy. He's in heaven now. And this has been several years ago, but, um, you know, after he was taking me around, getting permits, meeting people, just doing all the front work, I said to him, Charles, how did you do this? I mean, how did you do all this? I see you're, 
I see your picture or I see your name on buildings. I see you a car dealerships, strip malls, restaurants, jewelry stores. He had, I said, how did you do? Did, did you inherit this? And he goes, no, I was an orphan child. And he said, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, he said, I was an orphan child. And, um, and he just said, I had, to, I had to learn what not to do in life. And that's where the, and we ended up going to his office. He went over to his file cabinet and got a, a legal size pad out, uh, out of a file. And he took the, the, the page and made a copy on the front and the back. He handed it to me and said, if you'll memorize everything on here, you'll be a success in life. Now, were those his? Yeah, they were just the things that changed his life as a little boy. I, I think it's a good point you've made that when people go to a large evangelistic meeting, they have no clue. They have no clue what the they stuff think it you just did. happens. Yeah, you it, just, it just show happens, up and praise you know? the Lord. Yeah, it's like a church service or, or in here. <laughs> look at all the everything that had to happen here just for you to have a television show today. Yeah. It's incredible. Now, this this is not just an organizational book, but no. it, it is it is somewhat. Um, how did this change your life? Because I've, I've gone through the chapters, mm -hmm. and they're so beneficial. So, I mean, for a housewife, somebody that's... We talk about uh, ladies on here being home managers. Mm -hmm. And, well, maybe you could uh, even speak to that, that if you manage your home, like maybe mm -hmm. this book, mm -hmm. it's going to be more peaceful. Yes, yes. Can you adapt well, some of these things to homemakers? Oh, absolutely. There's the subtitle, Eight Truths That Transforms Life, Business, and Whatever It Is That We Have to Do. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite chapter, um, Arthelene, is um, the one on focus. Mm -hmm. um, because it, Yeah, I it, made note of that one. Yeah, it, it has to do with the way we think and process things. And we think that we're being very effective and uh, very productive when we're multitasking, mm -hmm. when we're doing all these things. We're on the computer, we're on the phone, we're writing things down, and it has been proven that we are much less effective when our focus is divided into so Today, with many all of our different, <laughs> different pieces. Uh -huh. So um, I helped him with some of the, the editing on this book, and mm -hmm. the, the one on focus was particularly important because we have to be as, as Christians, as individuals, very, very focused people in what we're doing and not just doing things just haphazardly or on automatic. Oh, yes. Well, life is supposed to be... Preach that one. We're supposed <laughs> yeah. to live life proactively and not mm -hmm. reactively. Bill Gates tells a story in one of his books about, about being in a, um, a restaurant in one of the high hotels in New York City. And he had two of the other titans of industry there with him. And a man walked up to the table and he said, Please forgive me for interrupting your dinner, but I know who all three of you are. You're all three billionaires, and I'll never have this opportunity ever again in the rest of my life. Would you give me, as a young entrepreneur, one key, just one key on how to get ahead in life? And without talking amongst themselves or rehearsal in any way, they all three said at the same time the word focus. focus. So. Well, it makes perfect sense. Okay, in a way, you both are saying... If you can only read one chapter, read the one, on, read the one on focus, but we want you to read the whole thing. Actually, if you just tuned in, I'm talking to uh, Pastor Daniel Height and his wife, Jocelyn. We're talking about the book, Keep It Simple. And this drew my attention because yellow is my favorite color yeah. in the first place. <laughs> you know, if you paint a house yellow, it'll sell faster. I didn't yeah, know that's that. True. That's true. We're just full of knowledge here. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, the title, it... it the whole thing grabs you and um, you know to think that this gentleman you're talking yeah. about had an opportunity to meet all these billionaires and they had they had one word and it's it's really true even for the uh, homekeeper yes. that um, whether you're cooking or cleaning yes. keep the focus and you'll, you'll get it done more quickly more efficiently and have more peace in your home yeah. well how many times have we started cleaning the house and we'll start in one room, and then we see something in the kitchen, oh, yeah. and then we'll go back to the den. And we wind up spending the entire day all over the house, but never really accomplishing anything. You just met <laughs> the author of that. Now, uh, for pastors, boy, this could make them so much more effective and save time. 
Yeah, well, well, keeping it simple is has everything to do with focus, and mm -hmm. that's actually one of the keys he told me on this piece of paper he gave me. He had all these scriptures, he had quips, he had quotes and all those things, and one of them was, keep it simple, and I asked him about that, and he just went through a, a whole list of things. Each day when I'd get back to the hotel, mm -hmm. I'd write either write things down or mm -hmm. I'd take notes during the day to remember what what he said and why he was saying it mm -hmm. and how this guy went from being an orphan child no leadership in his life some of it even bad leadership to having multiple millions of dollars mm -hmm. and and just him telling me the keys on and and even for pastors you know there there are keys here about keeping keeping ministry simple i mean you've seen ministry over the years you know yeah, how the how the church has gotten off course trying to get a little too fancy for our own britches you know instead mm -hmm. of just sticking with the gospel the good news of jesus christ if there mm -hmm. was ever a, a place where that word fits focus is keeping it keeping it on our purpose, on what we're here for, to, to get people saved, change their lives. That's right. And he, so said, forth. he said something really powerful, chapter 2. He talked about how to, um, he said, you know, if you want to be successful in life, one of his little keys was you've got to do what, un, you can't do what unsuccessful people do on a regular pe basis. Uh, basis. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just sat there and, and just listened to him begin to list some of the yeah, things. Elaborate. That, and I even, I spent a lot of time in the, uh, the internet Googling this and figuring out what do unsuccessful people do? They waste time. They're not focused. Mm -hmm. they, they stop learning. You and I were just mentioned mm -hmm. it. You, you, they say in life, if you want to lead, you have to keep learning. You always have mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Why? Because wisdom is always the principal thing. They fear change. And that's one thing oh, that's you, very true. you got you got to press through those resistance areas, you know, and and then there's they don't have a goal in life. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a goal, you're just going to be a roaming generality. There's no telling where you're going to. That's why the Lord talked to us, talked to us about, you know, the the flow of the stream and how you the current of things. He mm -hmm. talked about that because mm -hmm. if you get in the wrong current, it'll mm -hmm. just take you. So so if we don't if we mm -hmm. want to be successful in no matter what area it is in life, you know, we have to, um, we, just, we just have to be focused. I, w I would say that I, I love motivational books and to read, you know, with successful people. But that's not exactly, this, this book is a little different than, than most of them. It's, it's not a one, two, three, four plan. It's, uh, you kind of, each chapter looks at the big picture. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I think it fits mm -hmm. anything fr from the big businessman, the pastor, to, to the home keeper. Well, there, there's so much similarity there. We hope so. That's what we, that's, we wanted it to make it as practical, but also spiritual at the same mm -hmm, time, because mm -hmm. we're spiritual beings, but we, we live in a very, a world that demands us to be practical, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Now, one of the chapters, uh, and maybe it's the last one, the No Excuse Zone. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if there's anybody out there that's not guilty. We all have that, don't we? Yeah. We all have that, and if we're not careful, you know, I heard a, a preacher say one time, he says, you know, we all have our excuse devils. And, mm -hmm. you know, if we're not careful, we'll just build a monument to that and always revert back to that. I think the statistic was 90% of the people that we meet in life, and of course, that's not this program because these people are going mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. People that are watching now are, live life on purpose. That's my viewers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But they say 90% of the people that you come in contact in life live in the past. My, my. Yeah, and you'll just, you'll just repeat the future if you do that, or repeat that in mm -hmm. your future. History always repeats itself unless you live mm -hmm. proactively, mm -hmm. unless you're shooting for a goal and you know where you want to go in life. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that most of mankind is very good at excuses, even if you just have to make them up. Yeah. They're, uh, <laughs> that, that hold us back. But... Jesus said, I've come that you have life and have mm -hmm. it more abundantly. Well, to me, part of the abundance would be uh, the ability to move forward, learn more. Mm -hmm. You don't ever need to stop learning. Mm -hmm. Chapter 7 in the book is titled, Somebody Up There Likes Me. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we all have to get that vision. It does not matter if you're, if you're at home and you're keeping a house 
and raising children or if you run a major business or you're a school teacher, it doesn't matter. We all have enough trials in life where we've got to be focused enough to understand that somebody up there likes us. Not that's only right. likes us, but loves us. And if that's true, and it is, we'll always have favor no matter what it is in life. If God is for us, there you like, go. who can who be can against, against us? us? Yeah. Um, I was thinking the other day about, uh, you know, new goals, even at this age. And I once heard this story. I think, I think we're easily discouraged and we don't mm -hmm. recognize it. Heard the story of somebody who visited, the, visited Satan's tool shop. And one of his tools was murder, one adultery, one stealing and all. And they were all in good shape. But there was one that they said, what in the world is this? Couldn't tell. It was so beat up. And Satan said, oh, that's the one I use the most. And it's discouragement. Mm. Wouldn't that go with your excuses a lot of yeah, times? Yeah, e exactly. You know, it's not a fair world we live in. Mm -hmm. It's not fair, you know. But Jesus said, you know, the scripture teaches us he's come to give us life and life more abundantly. John 10.10, 10, Oral Roberts used to say, everything you need to know about God and everything you need to know about the devil can be found in John 10.10. 10. Mm -hmm. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come to give you life mm -hmm. and life abundantly. And this is a tough world out there, and we need to, we need to have things to always remind us to be encouraged in the Lord. I, I've been praying recently. I don't want to quit, quit learning, but God, just, you know, put a light on when I get discouraged. Yeah, I don't have absolutely. To accept, you don't have to accept that. That's yeah, right. Exactly. That. If you just join me, I'm talking to Pastor uh, Dan Height, and I want to encourage you to get this book. We've got the website up there. I'm sure they can get it on Amazon. and can get it in bookstores, Amazon. It's mm -hmm. in all the life stores, Amazon, and, and, uh, mm -hmm. the, or the website. If they could do it on the website, they mm -hmm. get a free, free signature. We won't charge anything for that. <laughs> oh, okay. How does that sound? <laughs> well, that would be good. But uh, eight truths that transform life, business, and relationships. Okay, uh, I know you're familiar with this book. How does it transform a relationship? How does it, uh, tr well, it transforms a relationship because you're living a more focused, purpose-driven life mm -hmm. where you're not just letting life happen to you. You know, getting back to the no excuse zone, every day we can find an excuse to not live at our optimum level. Yeah. Um, I went, That's easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I went through a very difficult period of time recently, and um, it was a trial for me. And the way that I reacted was I reacted not in a typical fashion. I just became a different person. I be became very discouraged, very down, very fearful. And so um, I said to him, well, I, this happened to me. My thinking happened to me because so-and-so said this to me. And he <laughs> said, there's your excuse, devil, right there. You, you're not dealing with That's you <laughs> by blaming them for how you reacted. You can't blame them. So, no, you can't. And if you want to improve your relationships in life and be, just be a better human, you've got to deal with your stuff. You've got to feel the feelings. And what did and he? What did you say when he said that's your ex I, no, that's ex your excuse, devil? Excuse devil, yeah. <laughs> you know, I did thought it improve in my mind, your relationship? That's what we wanted. I to thought know. in my mind, he has no pity for me. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? Where's the love? But it led to but, discouragement, like you were saying, which not not what I said. But, but she what no, she was going through. Yeah, you know? it it made me look at myself and say, yeah, that is absolutely an excuse devil in our relationship because I'm not dealing with things the way I ought to. And she yeah, had, she had actually changed. She, as a person, she had changed because she's such a positive, oh, you, you, know, you know, she's so positive all the time. And there was just this little shift by something somebody said. And, you know, it's somebody we love and, you know. Well, those things can just come out of left field at you yes. and kind of depending on what's going on, depending on the person and all, we're all vulnerable to that. So I think you did the right thing as a husband. Absolutely and did the right thing. Well, Absolutely. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still married. We're, st uh, we're going to make it. Yeah. We're going to make it. You know, we're out of time, but uh, they're, go they're going to come back. Uh, we've barely scratched the surface on this, but also you have written a book we want to talk about. Tell us the name of it. I wrote this book really early on. It's called How to Meet and Marry the Man of Your Dreams. Because I can hear the audience saying, <laughs> yeah, I want to hear that. <laughs> the reason I wrote this book was because I was the last one in my tribe to get married. 
the very last one. Oh, I can one. hardly wait. I can and hardly wait. And I was You're gonna not going to tell us your settle. story, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. this oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. Uh, but we are out of time. You stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, I'm sure you enjoyed that. <clears throat> that, and I'll be uh, very thankful to welcome them back to the program. Let me again remind you of this uh, Bible basics for everyone. I don't know about you, but I read scripture morning and night. I read a little Old Testament, a little New Testament, and I have been to Bible college, but uh, I didn't graduate. I only went a year, but a lot of you never even had that experience and that privilege. So something as small as this book can really give you a wonderful aid as you study the Bible. And remember, the Bible is Holy Spirit inspired. And as you open it up, read it more, and try to understand it more, uh, it's going to find a place in your heart. So I think this book could help you. It's small, it's basic, but it will give you that jump start uh, to understand the Bible better. So the information is on your screen. You can use the 800 number if you use a credit card. 1-800-229-0059 or our address is box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758 and um, we'll get it right out to you. I have a feeling that uh, a lot of you, you want to take that next step into understanding the scripture a little bit better. Well, I, as I said in the program, I love to have uh, people on who can give me shortcuts, give me better organization and all. And I still have a long way to go. So I have a feeling that a lot of you appreciated what they had to say. And it's very possible that a lot of folks out there have never even, you know, had a, a, a go-to list or something to make you understand that you can live your life much more efficiently. And that's why I'm thankful to bring those kind of people, those kind of, uh, th that kind of person and uh, that kind of book to you. So I hope that uh, you got a lot out of that. We are out of time, but I will join you next time. Remembering, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.